So this is just the introduction to this peer-reviewed piece. It's funny how there's no funding. There's no funding for research or anything unless there is money to be had in it. If someone's talking about like philosophy or anything like that, the only way that it's gonna get funding is if they go into the economics of it and how it'll help people make money off of you, off of people. So this essay, like after the introduction, it goes to like crazy math equations on how to like figure out this stuff and how to make money off of it for, you know, businesses and corporations. But the first part's really interesting. So it talks a lot about taboos and identity. So first off, what is a taboo? Something that's sacred in society. Yeah, sacred is one, put it right here. Sacred. Unthinkable yeah, unthinkable. Why would it be unthinkable? Maybe to like prevent people from doing a certain action. Because it's it's wrong. Okay. Do you have restrictions on taboos? Yeah. What else do we call restrictions? Violation. No. What are you violating? Laws. Laws. We have laws. Yes. And and some restrictions can be for the sacred. It's because this is for these people, not those people, or depending on who you are, you can or can't do it. I think we got enough there. Mainly when you think about taboos, you think about there's something that you're not supposed to do. What are you supposed to do? So I guess that depends on what we're talking about. In this discussion, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about it like on a spectrum. We'll say over here is this is normal and then this is not normal. <laughs> because when it comes down to it, some things are wrong but you can still do them or you shouldn't do them or something. It's still a taboo. You shouldn't do it, but it's not illegal. And then depending on how much of a taboo it is, meaning how many people agree with it being a taboo also, and then the severity of it, the consequences of it, it will become illegal. We will make law, actual law against it. So for our purposes here, we just make it a spectrum of normal and not normal, but that is oversimplifying it, of course. This helps us at least for writing it on the board, but if we were gonna do this realistically, it would probably be like, like this instead. And so this would be the norm and anything that, that starts going away from it would be taboo, but then at a certain point, we've already established with the cats, right? Depending on where you are, things could be, well, if I go to China though, then this is actually normal. Or some other things. That idea of sacred or d too dangerous. Can you think of anything that you're not allowed to do that's a taboo for you right now, but isn't for someone else? Drinking if you're underage. Drinking if you're underage. Or smoking weed if you're underage, because that's the thing now. And there's different reasons for that stuff. All right, so let's put some stuff on here and then you tell me, we're even gonna say like which direction it's going because things even change over time. Over time, location, and depending on the individual, yeah? But I'm not gonna do, we can't do that. That would be, this would have to be like a crazy three-dimensional beast that we're, I don't know how to draw and it's flat. So we're only working with two dimensions here. So just work with me. Also, I would suggest you drawing one of these in your notebook, maybe put it sideways so that uh, you have more space. And we're gonna say like American culture here. So rather than multiple cultures, we're just gonna focus on American culture. So what would be something that, that might be on the scale here? I was thinking, uh... Sex before marriage. Where should that go? Normal. Huh? Normal. Normal. Yeah, like all the way here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about marriage or divorce? Uh, really? In the middle? It is normal, but I mean, if you even look at the statistics, more people get divorced then stay together. So actually it should be over here, right? Divorce, marriage. Adultery. Adultery, yeah. Where? By divorce. By divorce? It's more 
Or Sabu. <laughs> is it though? Yeah. Hmm. This does get complicated because while it is taboo, is it common? Normal and common. We can even do this. Looked down on good or whatevs. That'll help us a bit, I think. But you're right to, to question that. So where do we put it? It is more complicated than that. So we look down on it, but then we can brush it off, right? Because I mean, the heart wants what the heart wants. So, and wasn't she a bitch, right? <laughs> and she wasn't putting out. See, I'm talking from like, it'd be really dumb for me to like pull a, an Ed Sheeran and you know, put on the girl's voice. So where does it go between taboo and, and whatevs? It's pretty bad, but nobody's gonna shoot you for it, right? Yeah, it's so weird. Wait, that's kind of true, right? Because it's about like, the social punishment thing where people look down on you and your standing will kind of get lowered and your public, people's public opinion about you will start being like negative towards you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but is it that much more negative than getting a divorce? We'll say this, and you can put it wherever you want because it really does depend. Are we in Texas? Are we in LA? Utah? But this is not, this is an adult training that you're deceiving somebody. It's not like it's a, yes. you know, there's not cooperation with that. Yeah, but I mean, they really want it out of the relationship, you know, so. Not necessarily. <laughs> I like where you're going with that. Yeah, let's say, yeah, put it over here more. Uh, but that one's iffy, that one's hard. You could put incest under taboo, like on the far right. Okay, do you think? I know. <laughs> I think that's a that's hard just, right. Uh, yeah. I think we can talk. We could talk incest. I think there's worse. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's there's all this room over here too. So we'll we'll put incest around here, but not quite as bad as rape. Rape. Which what is under rape? Right. You're raping a child, even if they consent. That's not consent because their mind is not developed enough to consent. They don't know what they're giving you. <laughs> Let's play a game. What's the, the old man on, on Family Guy? I got a popsicle in my pocket. Yeah, I have a buddy who does it like perfectly. We laugh at it, but it is, yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean, that, yeah. All right, so what else? Necro and Beastiality. All right, so yeah, all of those, and yeah, you can just put them way over there. There are associations like NAMBLA, North American Association for Man-Boy Love. Yeah, there are people who will argue that, hey, they're so mature for their age. Yeah, it's really hard to uh, represent those arguments and not want to punch myself in the face, so you can look it up if you want. So all of those are rape. What else do we have within that? We got those out of the way, yeah? Porn and masturbation. Where's that? It's a little more normal than sex before marriage, I would think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Self pleasure. What happens if you are married and you do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Is that cheating? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> Is that cheating? Oh, oh, the foreign. No. Probably? I don't know. I mean, like, you have a whole ass wife, so what, what are you doing? Yeah. Whole ass wife. <laughs> no, 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 not a partial wife. Yeah. You have a full wife, yeah. so like. So yeah, this is more common, and people even married would even say a lot of the time, I mean, at least they're not cheating on me or something physically, but then also you're doing something with your mind that is the same. And what happens if that, that augments sex life and things like that? So there could be something there, but we're just talking about what's common or not and looked down on or not. And honestly, this is such a common thing talked about in TV shows and things like that, just common thing. But yeah, it's probably way over here, you're right. What else? How about furries? Yeah, I didn't want to get into like, fetish stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Like... Okay, where's feet? That's why I didn't want to get into it. Where is feet on here? I think 
think the feed people can uh, they can hang out with the incest crowd over there. Really? <laughs> it's just feed, man. I mean, I don't. <laughs> Why is this a taboo? A, it's gross, just based off of like, that's your same blood, but above that, there's a, uh, the implication of what is this doing psychologically? How long has this been going on? And like, are you forcing the other person into this? Are they locked into a family structure where they- Cause it could be still there? be that, yeah, yeah. you're right. It's also got legal implications. Mm-hmm, well, so illegal, it is illegal, and that's why it's over there. But in some places, this isn't illegal. What if it's just cousins? That's in a lot of cultures, like cousins marry, like first cousins. And then that's not the first generation that happened. And then they get weird birth defects. Because after two generations of that, your birth defect chances are much higher up there. But if it's just the first generation, apparently you're okay, I've heard. I still wouldn't risk that. So, so definitely all the stuff you said, I would say are the bigger, stronger arguments for why that's wrong, because you're looking at someone who is your family member, who you're supposed to love a certain way, you're looking at them sexually. We're just saying incest in general, cousins, but what happens if it's your parent, right? And then what's going on there? Does that parent already have a spouse and also, that's not supposed, yeah, why is that not supposed to happen? Genetic code stuff, this is a danger to generations. And that's why it would be over here. But then what also is, is a danger, because this is talking about childbearing and stuff like that. So this, it is illegal. You do not have rights to have a child with that person. What about someone who is doing drugs? Like they're a heroin addict. Do they have rights to have kids while they're on heroin? I just came across this argument like yesterday, so it was tripping me out. They have rights. They do. What happens if a heroin addict keeps doing heroin or someone who, who's a meth addict keeps doing meth through a pregnancy? What happens to that baby? Yeah. They get damaged, they're addicted. Like we're talking huge birth defects. So what you're saying is that we should beat up all meth addicts, right? <laughs> All drug addicts on the street, we should just beat them up before they reproduce and cause babies to be born in happiness lives. Well, heroin addicts and meth addicts can recover, right? Um, it's just, it, it should probably be looked at similar to this because it's the same problem there, that one scenario of it. Or not, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. So where are feet on here? Uh, feet, are they at least... I mean, adultery over here. What's worse, adultery or feet? Feet. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Okay, what's another one that's not feet but is also fetish like? Uh, BDSM. Okay, yeah, what about that? Uh, we just had 50 shades of lame. That was dumb. That was dumb. Uh, but 50 shades of uh, fantasy abuse came out, and that one show I was telling you about, Outlander, clearly fetishizing, torturing someone, uh, and raping them, and then trying to get them to like it. And then you're showing this to people, and then notice there's an arrow here, right? So do things always stay in that same spot? And how do they change location? So let's just say tattoos. Let's just move on. But you definitely should have put feet like somewhere around here. For um, feet? Huh? Just for feet? Okay, what about anal? Where does anal go? Probably not. I feel like anal's over here. <laughs> Kids are. <laughs> What goes over here with, with fetishes? Where's, where's anal? Yeah, that's like uh, over here. Yeah? Where I'm not gonna ask so many questions here. Um, all right, so there's different reasons why these things change. Uh, this is going this way, right? What do you think? Yeah? 
It's clearly, I mean, you couldn't even give a blowjob in some states uh, back in the day. Now people are like, hey, now I don't have to give up my virginity. I don't know what the logic is on that, but what, what's the, there's a joke about eating ass or something. Uh, what? <laughs> How about eating ass? All right. Apparently that's a first date thing now. All right. First date thing now. Yep, that's on the board. All right. So you're writing these down, right? You can put them wherever you want. This is us trying to figure out what this looks like. And I've heard many people say that this is just normal, right? And if you're not doing it, you, you gotta up your game. By the way, what does that say about it? So let's just say that th this arrow has gone over. Let's say tattoos. Let's, let's move on to tattoos. I just wanted to put eating ass on the board before we went any further. <laughs> All right, tattoos. Where are tattoos? Yeah. I am the least tattooed of all my colleagues. They all have like Harry Potter tattoos and stuff <laughs> like, right? Uh, so yeah, tattoos are now just way over here. Everyone's got tattoos now. Where were tattoos 50 years ago? Bad, unless you were a sailor. How, how about if you're in China 50 years ago or even like 20 years ago? Definitely over here. Uh, illegal, actually. Japan, what makes it taboo also? Because the Yakuza. Anyone who's doing it must be a Yakuza, must be a gangster. Uh, it actually got really popular in the 1890s um, where gangsters started getting full body tattoos where they were putting these drawings that had been done of old school samurai and criminals from back in the day who those guys used to get tattooed. Tattoos used to be markers of this person's a criminal in the feudal times. Just put a big fat bar or three bars or a circle or an ax across the person's forehead and you're like, don't trust this person. They're a criminal, right? So you're branded for life. But since then, it has been modified. Gangsters started getting them. Sailors, right? And then it was like a merit badge thing with sailors. That's, that's a trip, right? So each time you got a certain thing, it meant you, you had accomplished a certain thing at sea, like swallows were 5,000 nautical miles or something like that. Different things meant like, oh, you went around the Cape or whatever. So that's interesting, but all of it, it becomes more and more common place until it finally is not a taboo anymore. Or, I mean, at this point, my mom had more tattoos than me. Like she had like a, some kanji on the back of her neck. She wanted to get a teardrop. <laughs> and then I told her, I was like, no, you can't do that. That means something. Uh, prisoners also, and they had a lot of time on their hands. Notice how it went from something where it's like, this indicates that you're a criminal, all the way to whatevs, right? Oh, cool tattoo. Oh, it symbolizes the thing about how cool and original I am, even though everyone has a tattoo. <laughs> What else could go on here? We spent way too much time on sex. What's something that we're missing? Murder. Murder. Yeah. Murder's where? All the way to the right, probably. Yeah. Probably um, just before rape, actually. Just before rape. I'd say <laughs> that, too. Even if it is illegal and you get prosecuted to the point of, like, 25 to life, you are still not going to get necessarily murdered in prison. Like you should, should, I don't know. Really depends because there are different forms of rape, aren't there? Just like there are different forms of murder. Statutory rape. What if she's 16 and you're 18? Murder, there's different forms of murder and they get different penalties. First degree, you planned this in advance. Second degree, impulse, right? Right in the heat of the moment. And then third degree is just manslaughter. It was an accident, yeah? And there's a huge difference in the consequences for that. So just because it's under law, fully illegal, doesn't mean there's still not varying degrees within that. So yeah, we've got murder on the board, what else? Stealing. Yeah. Well, let's, let's clarify. Uh, stealing from a poor person or a blind person. It's pretty bad. 
That's that's bad. Yeah, that would be over here. Well, it's illegal. Stealing from Walmart. From Walmart. Stealing from banks. It's definitely illegal. But are they badasses? <laughs> they look cool. There was this kid, I can't remember how many years ago, but he went around just like stealing all throughout the Northwest. Stealing planes and riding around, like going all over the place, hiding out in people's houses. He became like a sensation and kids loved him and wanted to kind of be like him because it's just like, yeah, F the world. Anarchy, do what you want. You're not really hurting anyone because they're all just a bunch of rich townies, you know? Stealing from the rich is encouraged. That's yeah. And then what about this though? The rich people stealing from... The poor people? That's, from poor people. In terms of commonality, that's pretty... That's just life. Pretty vicious, yeah. So you could say uh, it's a taboo, but it's hard when it's happening all the freaking time. Why did we bail out Wall Street? Why not bail out the people that owed the banks and then the banks would get the money and then you don't have a whole bunch of people who are screwed also. It was so weird how we did that. And where do we get the money from? It comes from us anyway through our taxes because inflation is not just magic. These things change, but what changes them? It's different. So try and grab onto one and tell me what, what might have changed society-wide that, that would have made it go that route. Um, the pink thing, like people became more open-minded and more accepting and but why? more open with their sexuality now. Okay, so how does that happen? Bring attention to it. Bring attention to it, how do you do that? So first of all, making it, putting it out there, right? So, so porn, it's hard to find at first, but then as it becomes more and more popular, there's a demand for it and then people get access. Internet has made things just go crazy because then there's also anonymity. But then once you are fully, so think about how, how things become normalized, right? So you joke about it and then you joke about it long enough, it's, it's just normal. These things, they become more and more common, so they're out there. But there's other stuff, technology changes. So the technology of the internet, technology of film. What about weed? Why did weed go this way? Um, and making it more common, accessible science, right? We, we've been doing a lot of stuff with it, which is really hard to do research with something that's a schedule one narcotic. Face tattoos. So people in the public sphere, making it more and more normal, right? Uh, that was the very reason why Post Malone started getting face tattoos or tattoos at all. He was like, damn, if Justin Bieber can do it, then I can totally pull off tattoos. That was straight up his, his argument. It's not, a good argument. it's not. Technology, yeah, technology gets better. Do you think you would have wanted cosmetic surgery from like when they were first starting it out and trying that stuff out? Yeah, now they've got it down in a way. I mean, still, your skin is not going to age well no matter what you do with, with it like that. Just keep pulling it back. Well, I mean, it's also going to give people like a tragic accident. There we go. So there's also other needs, right? So, so burn victims and, and accidents where people needed that stuff. You could totally see the development going that way. And then justification of it goes to the cosmetic realm after it. Like first, weed is like health stuff, but then once, I mean, once we have CBD, right? Then, I mean, well then why is this? Why do we need this if we have this? Helps me out with stress, even though it also produces paranoia. So, how does that work? I don't think we have enough up here. How about being gay? Where's that? Normal. Yeah, that's normal now. Uh, where was it? 30 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. So over here, and then 50 years ago, you were given chemical castration. Like that one dude that we were talking about, the Enigma. Yeah, yeah, that dude, the guy who winning World War II wouldn't have even been possible without him. When they found out he was gay, they chemically castrated him. That was in Britain, but still we did like horrible stuff here, like electric shock therapy and things like that. The chemical castration thing is you're literally giving people drugs to make them not have any sex drive. You're making them impotent. It's, it's really freaking messed up. He killed himself also after that. I wonder if it was related. Yes. So huge difference on that one. 
So what are some of the reasons why things go from repulsive, wrong, any of that stuff, over to normal? Yeah, so you make it common. Yes, this is common, but you put more of it out there. You give it exposure. Once you've wrestled with an idea long enough, like how about this? Are you guys planning on having kids? Yeah, yeah. eventually. Yeah, so, well, I saw quite a few people shake their heads like, hell no, right? Why would you have kids? So there's movements where if you're gonna have kids, they'll call you a breeder. Like, as in like, yeah. Like, you already know where that's going, right? Like, oh, you're a breeder? This oh. is dystopian as fuck, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some of these people as friends on Facebook because I don't unfriend anybody. Think about how the idea of having kids, that used to be like, that's everyone's ambition was to have kids. How awesome that you get to like make another human and then grow them up to be a good person. You have a legacy now, so when you die, you don't necessarily completely die because you have now passed on genetic code, but not just that, but your own morals and identity that was formulated off of you. It's like Pokemon, but you go to jail if you force them to fight. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Don't force your kids to fight, but you can force them to do chores depending on the chores. But this idea of like having kids has now actually become like a bad thing. Population, and you're just adding another mouth to feed, and you're- So necessity feeds into it? Well, just look at, that was like villains before, but now you're like agreeing with villains. You're like, yeah, humans are the problem. We need less humans, right? Yeah. Kind of? The idea was entered through villains in movies, and then it becomes something that you've heard multiple times, to the point where it becomes a common thing. You're entertaining the thought, and then it doesn't sound so bad. You get to see the viewpoint, and then why not put the Terminator face on the Google Atlas robot? I feel like the entire moralizing what the villain would say thing mm -hmm. isn't... It's not that this was evil before and now we view it as good. It, I think that it was written to be agreeable to an extent in the first place because what's the most boring thing you could do in writing is to make somebody just be like ah, I'm bad because bad is cool right yeah. it's done to death nobody wants to watch a cartoon villain walk across the screen for more than 15 minutes right yeah that's why tom and jerry shorts are like five so we've changed our villains villains have backstories now right because that's more compelling it's yeah. what sticks with you more if your villain is saying things that you can sort of agree with, then you are more likely to like that franchise that it's attached to. Because it's making you think, it's making you go- Wait, oh, even the villain? Like, you just need the protagonist, really. You don't need the villain to be likable. Your brain likes to be challenged mm -hmm. at times. Yeah. Where it's like, if you look at a villain like Thanos, who's not gonna model the entire, oh, remove half the population thing and save the planet, when yeah. you hear that, you go, shit, he's kind of right, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not because you're evil instinctively or whatever. It's because the writers wrote him to be that way. And specifically, with the goal of you conflicting with yourself mm. or watching him and going down. If you don't make the evil guy a flat character, then it's, yeah, it makes it more of a challenge. Right, yeah, no, that's that's fair. That is fair, and that, honestly, it's not such a big point to be had, but it is interesting how things become common. So what about gay, being gay? So, maybe attachment to celebrities. Like, Freddie Mercury was gay, right? And he was a superstar. And he's A, in the public eye a whole bunch, and B, looked up to, respected by a lot of people. Okay. So, if you're a Freddie Mercury friend, but you're homophobic, and you find out he's gay, then you're more likely to be swayed, swayed to the other side. Because people who are looked up to then come out as that, so it strengthens, I guess, a movement towards this direction. What else? That's good. That was good. I think, because it, it could be applied to, like, any taboo almost, right? Like, big superstar, it comes out that he steals a bunch. Suddenly, all the little kids listen to his CD, he's like, damn, let's go hit up Target. Okay, so the mimicking the model thing, a bit, at least for that. And someone like that, 
having courage to come out then gives other people courage to come out. All right, we're talking about Freddie Mercury, not the, like, Mike Vick or anything like that. I love fighting dogs. Let's do that. No, um, what about martyrdom? Not necessarily martyrdom. What happens when you see, so someone is gay and they are beaten up for it or given chemical castration or something like that, that stuff comes to light. So you see an injustice happening to someone who is accused of a taboo, but you also have this feeling that even though that's a taboo, the thing that is happening to them in light of that is unjust. Is that something that could have pushed things in this direction too? That's kind of hard to debate because we're talking about factors that may have changed what taboos were between then and now, right? Yeah. So if we're assuming that seeing injustices done to the people who are doing the taboo Mm -hmm. is what swayed us, it stands to reason what flip the switch, what caused us to start going, hey, that sucks, stop doing that in the first place. Because yeah. society as a whole, or at least part of it, agreed, yeah, we should totally give these dudes chemicals and rot their brains and melt their junk off. Well, they're trying to fix them, right? That was the premise to begin with. So what changed between us and them that made us not think that this fixing is good anymore? There's nothing to fix. Yeah, but why do we know that and they don't? Well, the idea of it needing to be fixed has been changed. So yeah, what happened there? You're right. So if you can pinpoint the thing that has changed with it, so the idea of it being morally wrong, or there's a different thing of the idea that you develop that way, that it's a deviation from the normal thing. Well, think about that. Is it a deviation? All right, so. How do you do it the way that you are anatomically designed through evolution or God to procreate? It's, it's like penis and vagina, right? Okay, did we figure that out? Yeah? All right, so that's, that's the way that you can reproduce and maximum feel-good potential. Think about this. If you don't think through this stuff, it's not really fair to then come to another conclusion or to just like write it off. Like it's up to you guys if you think something is good or bad, but why is it good or bad? Could we say, uh, while still approving of homosexuality, that it is a deviation from the natural form? Like you are, you're desiring something that can't reproduce. You can't reproduce that way. But then also, is sex only for reproducing? So that depends also on your criteria for that. If it was only for reproducing, would it feel good? Would you be able to do it when you weren't pregnant? Things like that, Why would it be- Why does it feel good when you aren't reproducing? Yeah. And Why then, isn't it a magic spell that only feels good when it leads to reproduction? Yeah, what if it was just like a fist bump, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Contact. I think what happened was over time, we started to respect authority less and less, right? As it became came out that like, oh, the government's hiding this from us, or they do this, or this is in the water, whatnot, right? And it starts to go, well, damn, these guys are actively harming us and lying. What else are they harming and lying about, right? Yeah. And I think that because of that distrust in authority, we're able to then observe and assess what else they're doing or potentially doing wrong. And through that, you can realize, wait, the chemicals you're giving these dudes isn't helping them the way you think they are. Yeah. Just like the formula you put in the water isn't actually good for us. Yeah. Or the plastic that you're putting in the ocean isn't actually good for us. Right. That's good. There's another huge factor that we haven't really even considered yet, and that's uh, God. Where's God on here right now? The word sacred is up there. That's different. That's like the N-word, right? (laughs) So like, depending on who you are, it would be totally normal to say it, or completely, you should get beat up for saying that. Is it okay for anyone in this room to use the N-word? Are there people in the world where it is okay for them to use the N-word? Really? 
Not even Samuel L. Jackson or, or uh, not my favorite is, uh, come on, Training Day. Denzel, Denzel right? My, my man. Oh, what did you think I was going to say? Yeah. It could be endearing, can't it? No? Maybe. Depends, but maybe that's bad, but you can be arguing about that stuff. Well, so let's just say we're in a blue state right now. You're in college right now. If you chime in and say you believe in God in class and that's what your criteria is based off of what he has said about it, where does that go on here? Are you, think about, are you going to be embarrassed over it or are you going to be proud of it and no one's going to look down on you? Might be between divorce and adultery or divorce and feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, God's around here. And where was God before? Pretty common. Yeah, God was over here. And if you didn't believe in God, if you were an atheist, way over here. So think about that, because at the same time, at least in all the monotheistic religions, there's the very clear criteria of God said blank, which is enough if you are that religion devoutly. So if God says thou shalt not be gay, be, yeah, um, shall not be gay. man laying with another man or woman with a woman, mm, yeah. thing like that, right? Then you would say, because God said so. By the way, if you believe that, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to use that as your argument here, uh, that doesn't work. Why does that not work as an argument for this class or for just trying to talk to anyone about it? Proof. You know, the power to give somebody else direction. Are they going to ascribe to your criteria? That might not be their God. If they do ascribe to your criteria, then do you even need to have an argument with them over it? Right. They're already in agreement with you. So if you're arguing against someone who doesn't hold your criteria of the Bible or the Quran or you know any of that is the word of God, then you can't really use that for an argument against them they're not going to ascribe to it. So you gotta find something else, like maybe it's unhealthy. Maybe people who are LGBTQ are more likely to get sexually transmitted diseases or die earlier. Is it forbidden because it's bad? That like actually bad for you physically? Or is it forbidden just because someone was like this, you know, prude? This is going this way, right? As that has diminished, this has gone this way. But then we can argue what has caused the switch in God, right? God goes right, gay goes left. What made God go to the right in the first place? Which I think could be attributed to that distrust I was talking about before, where people are mm -hmm. looking around going, this shit blows, nothing's changing, must not be real. Making it more common, what else? What, what makes God go this way? Science, Science right? It's not on the chart here, but we're just talking about variables, which you should probably put down. So, so making it common, understanding more, which is science, physics, just understanding the way that the world works, proving facts. Let's see. So we can prove that God doesn't exist? Not exactly, no. Not with science. Science takes a controlled experiment. There are things that we have proven. Um, I actually watched like a documentary that, um, I forget, it was like some professor at USC, he actually found science in the Bible. Of course not written like yeah. how we speak nowadays, but it has stuff in like the first couple mm -hmm. chapters. Right, in Genesis 1. Yeah. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff in there. There's also, like, let's say, is the world flat? What does the Bible say? Probably. Doesn't say it's flat. It says, yeah, it, it says uses flat. the word circle. Circle they of the earth, a, yeah. They have the word in Hebrew for sphere. Uh -huh. So it's like, why didn't they use sphere? Same thing with in that first chapter, it uses the, the word for this was the first day and the first night, right? And it talks about six days of creation. Well, that word in Hebrew is not for a 24 hour period, although there is a word for a 24 hour period in Hebrew. So why didn't they use that instead? Instead, it's just an age thing. 
So there's also the ability to allow for more than just a six literal day creation. Sure, so people could go that route, but that was a taboo to even talk like that until 50 years ago, maybe. A lot of those things, kind of hard to see where they came out of. A lot of people in religion, even Christians, tried to kill each other over things like baptism. One group, they're like, uh, we don't think you should be baptized when you're born, because what are you doing with that? That's not someone's choice, right? You're forcing it. And if that's supposed to be symbolic of you becoming that thing by, by just starting you off, oh, you're already there, too late, then they were saying it should be when you believe it yourself, you get baptized. And so the people before that were like, that's funny. We're gonna kill you by drowning you. If you like water so much, uh, and those guys got drowned to death, so. Uh, but then that obviously came back, and that's what baptism is generally like now, except unless you are Catholic, Catholic or Orthodox. So that's, that's interesting. So much over there, so like even taboos within religions. So we talked about definitions and where these things go, but then there's, there's other concepts. We get this term, uh, taboo trade-offs. There's value in breaking taboos sometimes. The thing is, with trade-offs, is there a monetary value? What happens when you've got something that is considered sacred? So when it's sacred, it means that you can't put a monetary value on it. And if you did put a monetary value on it, then that would be a taboo even. Like, let's say, your marriage or your mother's life. W would you put a price on that? Because insurance companies do right there is a, there's an exact price and depending on do they smoke what's their blood pressure how old are they that indicates to them how much your parent is worth uh, would you be able to put a price tag on it because if you said well I'd take 10 million dollars for my parent they wouldn't give you 10 million dollars for your parent <laughs> there's no freaking way uh, talk about like maybe 150 grand, something like that. Do you think that's worth it? What about like an eyeball? Would you, would you give someone an eyeball for like a million bucks? How about like 10 million? Would you give a body part? How about your kidney? You have two. If you're like just selling it on the like market, then you can like up the price. Yeah. It's a green eye. Someone who's like, oh, I need an eye because like I'm not on the donor list. Yeah. See, but you can't do that. You're not allowed to sell body parts. That's well, that's illegal dumb. too. Dumb, right? Well, maybe you go to Tijuana and unload a kidney there, thirty grand. Which I wouldn't. I wouldn't give up my kidney for thirty grand. Um, huh? Do you? Do you only need one? You could live with one. You could live with one, right? See, think about this. Yeah, yeah. What happens? It, that puts so much more load on your body for everything. People have to start thinking about that stuff, how you can use it to your benefit. So what happens if you're the CEO of a company and it's more beneficial to you to liquidate your company, but that would destroy the lives of 10,000 employees. But it was already going to go down in like a year. So, I mean, they'd be out of work in a year. You have to start thinking about taboos now. You have to actually... Uh, wrestle with them and then maybe choose the taboo because of the other thing because what's more important to you This goes into your moral criteria and what is important Do you sustain these people for another like you don't even know them? You don't know that guy's name who cares, right? They go find another job. Maybe maybe Not live on the streets like what happened when everything went to crap in 2008 and around that time when you know your parents might have lost their jobs or something like that and then what happens to those people and how do they feel about getting a lower job or something like that? Then they have to deal with wrestling with ideas and stuff like that. So there's this cost benefit thing, um, negotiating taboos. I'm willing to go this far for this reason in this scenario. I'm willing to eat a human if I'm starving. I'm willing to hook up with my friend even though I'm in a relationship if it's in Vegas. Yeah, nothing stays anywhere with the internet. It becomes a meme. How do you enforce taboos? The basic walking down people, but then there's also legislation that could be passed.
Yeah, you enforce them by making it illegal and having punishment for it. Yeah. And sometimes that punishment could just be not as heavy. Like what happens when your friend dabs now? Sorry, not smoking weed, but like you have a friend that like dabs still. What do you do? You leave. You just walk away. You say, hey, bro, lose my number. Yeah, you, you can ostracize people. You can look down on them. And that could be a way of enforcing a taboo also, right? Or likewise, if someone is a bigot, because bigotry can even be uh, not uh, respecting someone's pronouns, right? So this now gets complicated. Let's say that person who doesn't respect a person's pronouns is doing it because they believe in God. Monotheistic God where God has said that they have been made male and female. And so they are practicing their religious freedom but they are also insulting another person by not calling them what they prefer to be called because it goes against their faith. Is that taboo? Which one's taboo, right? So it's taboo for them to then not accept the person's pronouns, but it's also now you're, you're telling a person they can't believe what they want to believe. Who's affecting who more? Or who's infringing upon another's rights more? It would have to be the person that believes in God is infringing on rights more. In the same way that one article we read on racism was arguing that you can't be racist against the ruling like race because you have no power over them. The trans movement is not exactly normal. Like it's not normalized completely. Mm -hmm. There's still discrimination against it. So being a cis person and going, hello, sir. Yeah, sir, over and over again, would influence, could influence other people to mistreat them the same way. Hmm. And that discrimination is more real than I said a word I didn't want to. And, oh man, that, that felt weird for two seconds. What about if the person isn't saying it in an antagonistic way, but more like in a just, I really can't help it way. This is, I have to. If, if I say what you want me to say, I am denying what I believe. Say something else. But you're pushing your beliefs on somebody else. So, so who's pushing whose beliefs on the other person? Hmm. Aren't they both pushing their beliefs? Well, one's requiring something out of the other person. I like your arguments, but I think that it's still much more difficult than that. You could get fired too, right? There's different things than just being ostracized. If you aren't respecting another person's gender identity, so it's, it's okay to not respect someone's religious beliefs if they're white Christians, right? because they're the upper class or, or the, the, the ruling class. But if they are a minority, uh, according to you know the LGBTQ community thing, then uh, yeah, so I, I think, you, yeah, you got something there with that argument. I also see how that could be deconstructed the way you did, where it's like, yeah, you don't have to believe in another person's religion if you don't want to at all. Like, yeah. I don't have to pray to Allah or to Buddha just because my friends are mm -hmm. Islamic or Buddhist. However, a trans person believes that they're a certain way and as a result, you then have to, have to believe the same. Otherwise, there's a problem. Right. Yeah. You could argue, once again, religion has done that, inquisitions, <laughs> you know? Right. Have we all figured out that that's wrong? <laughs> yeah. No matter what religion we are, inquisition, crusades, all that stuff's wrong where you're forcing something upon another person. We're still having a difficult time with this because uh, there's, there's other things. You even get incentives to 
go with or against taboos. And there's regulating what is forbidden and what is permitted. It's stuff to definitely think about, how it does change over time and why it's changing, because this is the weird thing that we think, is just because it's changing in this direction or that direction, we're assuming that it's changing for the better. But we don't know, because that's still a, a value argument. 